informed consent as it relates to prenatal screening is around whether a prospective parent wants to go ahead with screening in the first place, then it might be whether they want to go ahead with diagnostic testing, and then obviously there's informed consent around any action they might take as a result of the diagnostic or the prenatal screening. So it's important that parents at that during all those stages get presented with the fact that it is their choice during that time and they need the right information in order to be able to make that choice. Although I'd had two children before and had gone through, you know, the prenatal screening before, I didn't actually even realise that it was a, a choice of something that I could or, you know, didn't have to enter into. So went along to the doctor, they just basically um, write up all the, you know, blood test pathology form for you to have testing without really explaining what was going on. So we might have got a brochure the first time, I don't really remember. Um, but it was certainly just presented to us as a routine test and we didn't appreciate at all that it, it might pick something up. We were, it was probably a bit of naivety on our part, but we just assumed it would come back with a low chance. I think it's important for families to realise that the decision is theirs. So they might come under pressure to uh, decide in a particular way or the screening process can seem like it's part of routine pregnancy care. And that is, it's important to recognise that you have the option to consent, which means you have the option not to consent. It's also important to realise that it's not diagnostic at that point. So in terms of probability, that you'll often be given results that need to be interpreted to be understood in terms of what likelihood there is for a particular outcome. I think the diagnostic tests can be quite often misunderstood because there is a lot of technical information that is given to patients when they're, again, when they're not expecting that source. So the language we use and the information can um, not always sometimes be delivered at the level that the parents will understand. And when they're dealing with a lot of emotion in that situation as well, um, not everything that is said to them will be understood and absorbed. In that, in that regard to prenatal screening is discussing with them the difference between NIPT tests, nuchal translucency scans, what it tests for, what would, what would they do if the result did come back with a positive um, and then deciding if that was something that was important for them to test for it to begin with. We can support prospective parents by helping them understand the screening process, the journey and what other supports they can access in order to make the right decision for them. The information that will make a prospective parent comfortable that they're receiving the right information for them will be when they feel that they've got the information they need based on their values, their personal situation in order to make an informed decision. It can be time pressures in the minds of medic medicos around um, you know, dates and terminations, but I think that can really lead to situations that where the decision making feels forced and it doesn't, it can have lots of repercussions down the track. We offer what we call non-directive pregnancy counselling um, and what that is is that balanced support to be able to help them with um, information and to guide them through their decision making. 